Hi, my name is Barry Bowling. I am an application engineer with Yokogawa's Test and Measurement Department. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to set up a watt meter and measure three phase electrical power along with a number of other parameters using the two watt meter method. So first I'm going to explain what the two watt meter method is and then I will run quickly through an algebraic proof for total power using the two watt meter method along with a simple schematic. Next, I will show you how simple it is to connect a power meter using the two watt meter method and then using a three phase variable frequency drive, motor drive, and motor setup, I will make some measurements as part of this demonstration. Last, I will discuss the pros and cons of the two watt meter method and discuss when you should consider using the three watt meter method. Okay, here is the three phase, three wire system. The AC source is depicted on the left hand side, the load is on the right hand side. Only two phases pass through the current inputs of the power meter on each of the two watt meters. The third phase, phase T, is uninterrupted. There is no ammeter on it. You can see that we are measuring two voltages and two currents. That is to say that we have two watt meters. There's a third current, that current in phase T, or I sub T, that we do not measure, and it is unnecessary to measure it. And I would like to give you an easy way of thinking about the schematic. We are treating the T phase like it is a low side or a reference line. It is treated as common. It is not ground, but we do use it as a common reference point for both of the voltmeters. That is how simple the two watt meter method schematic really is. Generally speaking, when measuring three phase power, the first inclination would be to use three watt meters because we do have three phases. However, Blondell's theorem states that we can measure power using n minus one meters where n is the number of wires. For a three wire system, n minus one is three minus one equals two, and that means two watt meters. So for a three phase, three wire AC source, if you simply want to measure total power and a few other basic parameters, two watt meter method is more than sufficient. The two watt meter method is fast and easy to set up and uses fewer wires and connections. One more thing that I want to mention, if for some reason the two watt meter method turns out to be insufficient, then going to three watt meter method is very easy and very quick to do. Just add one more meter. I will demonstrate the three watt meter method in my next video. Okay, let's look at the algebraic derivation for the total power when using the two watt meter method. So in equation A here, I've written total power in terms of internal voltages such as ERN, ESN, ETN, and the phase currents, IR, IS, and IT. Um, in equation B, I've written uh, the total power seen by watt meter one as both IR times ERN minus ETN, again, internal voltages, and also as P1 equals IR times ERT, where ERT is more readily measured externally to the load, the load that has no neutral wire. Similarly, for P2, I've written it both in terms of the phase current IS, the internal voltages ESN and ETN, and the phase current IS, as well as an external more accessible voltage, EST. Equation D by Kirchhoff's law, the sum of the three phase currents equals zero. The neutral wire is non-existent, there's no neutral current in this equation. So we're going to solve for I sub T in terms of IR and IS. I've written that equation here as equation E. The very last step is to uh, write the total power equation again here um, in terms of the internal voltages and by substituting IT with minus IR plus IS we will solve for total power again in this equation here and with some simplifying we're going to move a few things around and get this equation here where total power is written in terms of phase uh, currents as well as uh, internal voltages and then going back to equations C and D, which I showed you previously, power one and power two equations, uh, these are starting to look very familiar. We can now uh, state that the total power is equal to P1 plus P2 
where each P1 and P2 are written in terms of line-to-line -line voltages um, as well as phase currents. Okay, we have the meter turned around now so that we can view the rear panels. We have element one and element two. This is watt meter one and watt meter two. At the top, you can see the voltage input connector pair on each meter. And at the bottom, you can see the current input connector pair, pair of spades. Let's discuss the voltage input. The first wire we want to connect is phase T, and in this case it's the blue wire. I connect it first because it doesn't pass through a current shunt, and I'm simply going to connect the blue wire of phase T to the bottom or the low side of each of the voltage inputs on each of the watt meters. So for voltage inputs, uh, phase R, the red wire, goes to the top of watt meter 1, and phase S goes to the top of the voltage input on watt meter 2. Next, on the current inputs, I simply take phase R from the drive and pass it through the top of the internal shunt or the current input on the power analyzer and pass it out the bottom and then that goes back to the motor. So that's phase R, it's red. Similarly on watt meter 2, phase S comes from the drive, it's black, it passes through the top of the internal shunt or the current input on watt meter 2, passes out the bottom, back to the motor. It's that simple. So let's do an easy or quick power measurement using the setup. Okay, I've completed the wiring and turned the power meter back around. I've also started the motor drive and I have the motor running. And as you can see here, we have the following measurements. On each element one and element two, I have the voltage measurements and then a total voltage for that system. I have a current for element one and element two as well and then a total current for that three-phase system as well. I have total power, I have P1 here, 1.7 watts for element one, and 1.62 watts for element two, and then a total power of 3.29 watts. So you can see that P1 plus P2 equals total power. And similarly, I have apparent power for each of the elements, uh, reactive power, and then uh, power factor, including total power factor for the three-phase three-wire system. Now that we have seen how to perform two watt meter power measurements, let's talk about the pros and cons of this method. First, some pros. This method is quick and easy to set up and there are just a few connections. You get an accurate total power measurement and you get line-to-line -line voltages and this method works great for a source load system that does not have a neutral. Now for some cons, Many are initially puzzled when they see that total power is the sum of two watt meters, but we discussed that today with the algebraic proof. The two watt meter method does not yield the phase power values, nor does it yield the line to neutral voltage equivalents. Most importantly, in the case of an unbalanced load, the total power factor calculation will have some uncertainty associated with it. So while the two watt meter method is ideal for many applications, if you happen to have an unbalanced load and you want reliable total power factor measurements, then please consider the three watt meter method. Okay, now I'd like to do a quick review. Today I explained what the two watt meter method is and we looked at a schematic of it and then went through an algebraic derivation or proof for total power. Then I demonstrated how quick and easy it is to connect two watt meters to a three-wire, three-phase system. Then I reviewed several pros and cons of the two watt meter method and discussed when you would need to consider using the three watt meter method. In my next video, I will demonstrate the three watt meter method using the same motor drive setup and another power analyzer. Thank you for watching and for more information, please visit tmi.yokogawa.com